Community Service Program in New Hampshire Elementary Schools has put eighth, eight fifth graders into what could be a big business. They came up with an idea to help latchkey kids, those who are left home alone, to fend for themselves. New England Cable News reporter Sydney Seward has their story. Home Alone can be scary for kids in the movies and for real. Have you ever been home alone? Yeah. What's it been like? Hmm. Different. There's nobody to talk to and to tell them any, anything, so I think it's kind of scary, even though I've never been home alone. I just, only once, and I don't really like it. These fifth graders at Chamberlain Elementary School in Rochester, New Hampshire, have an idea to help each other never feel home alone again. An emergency kit. Well, this is our kit. And we got some um, papers that um, home checklist. Um, what is safe to have in the kitchen, in the bathroom, the bedroom, the basement the laundry and the garage and this is just a babysitter's guide what you should do house rules what you can do and what you can't do um first aid what what do you need to do in case of emergency there's this roll page in our book and we're gonna have um the parents and the children sit down and they're gonna talk to each other about what the rules should be in case their child gets really scared they can talk to the child and help them out Helping out is the brainchild of a local corporate sponsor, Fleet Bank, who asked 12 New Hampshire schools to come up with ideas to help the community. 105th and 6th graders submitted ideas, everything from community cleanup to volunteering to help the homeless. But a home alone emergency kit is a first. We explained to them what brainstorming was. So we put up chart paper and we wrote all the ideas down and then they took a look at the ideas and they came to consensus over what they wanted to do. The kids have raised more than $600 for the project through selling popcorn. The rest of the money and materials to make more than 100 kits has been donated by 24 local organizations. It educated me a little bit, too, about um, having responsibilities and working as a team. And I, worked, I learned to um, go deal with phone calls, talk to other adults on the phone, because I had to order the boxes, and that was pretty scary. When you um, work as a team, you also accomplish a lot more than working just by yourself. It's taught all of us a great deal, and I think probably the, the best lesson that there's nothing that you cannot accomplish if you work together. Working together for these kids and adults means business. They have 2,000 more emergency kits to produce, and next week the whole school will get involved in an assembly line to do it. Then all of the kits will be shipped to the eight elementary schools in Rochester. Sydney Seward, New England Cable News, Rochester, New Hampshire. What a great idea. The abandonment cases like the Coy incident and the Chicago couple who left their daughters home alone for a week bring a sobering shock to many of us. Societal changes have many children going home alone after school, and while these children are not abandoned, they too can face similar dangers. And as WMUR's Christine Caswell tells us, a group of Rochester students is trying to change that. How about yourself? Do you ever stay home alone? Yeah, I was home alone this morning, and I'm usually home alone. Is it scary? Sometimes. Sometimes it's no fun, and even a bit scary, when you're a kid left home alone. That's why a group of eight fifth graders at Rochester's Chamberlain Street School are working long and hard to put together home alone safety kits. You never know. Maybe a fire could start, someone could break in, someone could drink poison. We have first aid items and a manual that tells what to do in case of a fire. We have a fire safety page. I hope that they would use them so they can be home alone a lot safer. In all, the students are putting together 2,100 home alone safety kits. They'll go to every Rochester family that has a child in grades one through five. An impressive and a timely task, as this comes on the day that New Hampshire's most celebrated home alone case goes to trial. 
cases like Kelly Coy's, the Rochester mother charged with leaving her three toddlers home alone, is a sobering reminder that life can be very different, sometimes dangerous for today's kids. Parents try to take precautions, but we have parents uh, who are both out there working, so sometimes it's very difficult to provide adequate care for students after school. As a result, from the mouths of babes come very grown-up words of advice. I think the parents should sit down and talk to the kids about an escape route. One of our things we did in the kit is we're helping parents with tips for parents. In Rochester, I'm Christine Caswell, WMUR's News 9. To help pay for the items in the safety kits, the students sold popcorn at the school. They were also sponsored by a regional bank. The fifth graders will give out the kits to Rochester parents next week during school vacation week. Fifth graders in New Hampshire has decided to do something about a subject that bothers a lot of kids these days, being left at home alone. News Center Susan Kimball went to Rochester today to find out just what they're doing at the Chamberlain Street Elementary School. This is a drill these fifth graders have done so many times they could do it in their sleep. They're putting together an emergency kit for latchkey children. Kids who are left home alone until their parents get home from work. We got guard pads, for cuts, jerseys. We put it on. Here's our manual. There's a fire safety escape plan and tips for parents. They've been putting these kits together since January. They raised the money themselves, designed the Home Alone Helper's manual, and decided as a group exactly what it should include. Have you gotten in any arguments? Yeah. 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 Lots of them. A couple. But we make them. Mom, We're like yeah. a family that sticks together every time. And that knows just how uncomfortable it can sometimes be to stay alone. It's kind of scary because the noise is in the house and in case like you get a cut or something, mm -hmm. by accident you drink something wrong. What do you think is the most important thing in that kit? I think I go along with the bandage and the gauze pads. And the night lights, the list of emergency phone numbers. Boy, you guys thought of everything, Band didn't you? Yeah. I think they did a pretty good job. So far, the kids have put about 500 kits together. Their final goal, 2,100. They figure that'll cover just about every single child in Rochester, New Hampshire, who has to spend any time home alone. In Rochester, Susan Kimball, News Center. The kits will be given out to all households in Rochester where there is a child in grades 1 to 5. The project is sponsored by Fleet Bank. This year was chosen by Fleet Bank to participate in a leadership program they have had going on throughout New England. And a group of fifth graders at Chamberlain were chosen. And we have invited them here tonight. They have received quite a bit of publicity, particularly actually outside of the city. And it certainly seemed appropriate that the school board in here in Rochester had a chance to, to see them in person and give them a chance to, to take advantage of cable TV covering them to let the, the city know the project they've been on. So at this time, I'm going to ask all of them to come forward, and they will actually introduce themselves as a part of telling you about the project. So rather than I do that, I will simply ask them all to come forward at this time. Chamberlain was one of 14 schools chosen in New Hampshire and is the only fifth grade team. Our team advisors are James McKenna, who is a Fleet Bank manager, Mrs. Riley, our principal, and Jennifer Wiggin, our school counselor. Mrs. Ann May, who is a coordinator for drug abuse prevention, was kind enough to come in and talk to us about several problems in our community, like helping the homeless, helping the elderly, and about latchkey kids. We brainstormed ideas and decided on helping latchkey kids. These are kids who are home alone for any amount of time. We decided it was a good idea to make 2,100 kits for all students in grades 1 through 5 in the Rochester area. We're giving out one kit per family. We needed a team, team name and came up with calling ourselves the Home Alone Helpers. Now Beth Miller will talk to you about one of our guest speakers. Hi, my name is Beth Norwood and I'm a Home Alone Helper. I'm here to talk to you about Hillary Douglas, who is the public relations person at Fiskew Memorial Hospital. 
I called her and I asked her if she could come in and talk to us about first aid items that could be in our kit. Hillary checked with the emergency room people for advice. She said that we shouldn't put in things that could be ingested like aspirin. She also said that we would get stickers with emergency numbers on them of the fire, police, and ambulance. The hospital also donated nightlights with emergency numbers on them. She said that the emergency numbers were only for big emergencies. When she left, we had a lot of helpful information to use. Now Stephanie Watson to talk to you about another guest. Hi, my name is Stephanie Watson and I'm a home alone helper. I'm here to talk about Alan Gunn. He came from the UNH Cooperative Extension Service to talk to our team about helping us with our kit. He showed us a pamphlet the Cooperative Extension uses to teach a course on parents. This gave us a lot of good ideas and helped us when we made our manual. Our manual contains information about handling emergencies like cuts and burns, important phone numbers, and rules that parents and children work out together. Alan Gunn also talked with us about handling situations where if you find something is different about your house, don't go in, go to a neighbor's house. Alan Gunn helped us a lot with our kit. Now here's Jen to talk to us about another guest. Hi, my name is Jen Weeks and I'm a home alone helper. The home alone helpers are glad to meet with Ms. Tucker. Ms. Tucker is the director for the Salvation Army and works with lots of kids in our area. She helped the program with only seven children and she was told to get more children. And after five months, the program has 52 children involved, some of these exit from Chamberlain Street School. She told us about the program. Children can go till 6 a.m. till 6 p.m before and after school and during school, vacations, half days, most holidays, and Monday through Friday. Each month they take a field trip to a park or even McDonald's. During the summer they go to water places like Water Country. When a child is sick and their parent can't stay home with them, they can be dropped off and taken care of. The fee is forty to seventy dollars per week. The fees include all meals and a rules page. The parents and children to decide what the rules will be. Children need to know from their parents if they should answer the door of room, what they can eat and not eat the electrical things. If they can invite friends over if they're home alone, home alone and they can call who they can call in case of an emergency. We also wrote down ideas about bigger brothers or sisters to take care of what are our brothers or sisters. That's not yelling or hitting them. Give them company. Play, sleep, and make sure they won't get into anything dangerous. Now Brandon will talk to us about the problems in the menu. Hello, my name is Brandon and I'm a home alone helper. One of the problems that we had to overcome was finding boxes. We wanted a certain size big enough to put our home alone helper items in, but small enough to carry. First we called a place called Mills of Industry. We finally got a price on the boxes. It was $2.50 a box. That was too expensive for us. Then we called two other companies, Casco and Agus. Then we called another company, Folk, called Folk. Their boxes were $0.21 cents for each box and $477.28 for 2,100 boxes. And we had to pay COD by March 31st. Both boxes came flat and we had to assemble them. For our first aid pages, we got information from Dr. Holman. He told us what to do if a child needs first aid, like if someone is choking. What to do if a child is bleeding badly. Mrs. Croft, our school nurse, helped us by looking over our first aid pages. Then we had to make changes on them. Now Stephanie will tell us about the printing of the manual. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm a homeowner helper. Our vocational visit. Mr. Vino is the director of the Vocational Center. We met him when we went there to see if they could help us with the manual for our kits and the cover for our boxes. We found out that they could help us, and Mr. Vino introduced us to Mr. McDonald, the graphic arts teacher. Mr. McDonald showed us the computer room in a room where there are a bunch of machines. A student showed us around, and we saw how the machines work, and we also got to see the dark room where the pictures were developed. Two weeks later from our first visit, we went back. We got to see how the computers work, and we got to use them to type the pages for our manual. On Saturday, April 3rd, we went back to the vocational center and printed our manual. 
And here's an example of our manual. It was a real adventure to get to use the high school kids' machines. Not only that, but we learned a lot about responsibilities and keeping an eye on the machine that we were using. <coughs> we used such machines as a computer, a printer, and a press that sorted the manuals, put the covers on the manuals, and stapled them. We also got to use the big paper trimmers. We were very lucky that Mr. McDonald had a lot of patience and helped us so much. And now Brian will tell us about getting supplies. Hello, I'm Brian Shalu and I'm a home alone helper. In order to complete our project, we needed donations of money and supplies. The Rochester Alternative School donated $500. Fleet Bank donated $100. Velcro USA donated Velcro to hold the top of the box together. WCDQ donated tape to hold the bottom of the box together. Walmart donated pencils. Shop and Save donated Ziploc bags. We are using the Ziploc bags to hold our first aid items in. Frisbee Hospital donated stickers with the emergency numbers, which families can stick on their phone. They also donated night lights, which have the hospital's phone number on it. Companies who donated first aid items were Care Pharmacy, Osco Drug, Ainsley's Drug, Purdue Frederick Company, Brooks Drug, Carney Drug, J.E. Gould Company, The Medicine Shop, Dr. Walter Horman, Riverside Rest Home, The Clipper Home, and The Rochester Manor. In order to raise money, we have been selling popcorn every Friday. We have been very successful. We have made over $600 so far. The Chamberlain PTA is also contributing money. During April vacation, we put together 500 of our kits. We had a lot of help. We distributed our boxes to New East Rochester School and Maple Street School so far. When we talked to the students in the classes that we gave the kits to, we found out that a lot of children are left home alone. So we think our kits will get a lot of use. We plan to make the rest of the kits and pass them out by the end of June. We would like to thank the school board for giving us a chance to share our project with you. Does anybody have any questions? Board members, are there any questions this evening? That when they presented to the PTA, the PTA was encouraged to ask questions because these kids love to answer questions. So if anyone has any, Please do. I've, I've, oh, Mr. Hutton. I, I do have one question. How long is it going to take you to put all these things together? One of you want to... Stephen, you want to... Yeah, um, well, it, has, it won't take us very long. It just took us 900 to make um, on vacation. We made 900. And we passed them out to Maple School and New East Rochester School. But we still got a lot to go. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, will, will this be a continuing project? Um, well, the kids have to be done by the end of the school year. Mr. Winsley? Yes. Do you know the total cost of your project and also the total amount that you've raised so far? Who, who covered that question? Who covered your budget the night of the PTA meeting? Brian. Yeah. Brian, can you answer that? I know you don't have your sheets with you. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can remember. Well, we raised about six hundred dollars so far on the popcorn and how much we had to pay for all this stuff and I'm not very sure. I have it on my chart but we don't have it here. Take a wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Five hundred? Five hundred? Thousand? We can get a little help from the audience. Mrs. Riley? Seventeen hundred dollars. Seventeen hundred yeah. yeah. by Stephen Fowler to tell the school board, is how he put it to me, to open the kits and see what they brought in for you all to look at before they get away, in case you have any questions about what are in the kits. Velcroed all of these so when, when they needed them, obviously they needed to open and then close them back and store them wherever the families are choosing to. So. You guys, thank you all very much for coming. If they have any questions, they know where to find you to call. Thank you very much.
understanding in terms of this, I, somebody can correct me, I believe there were, Mr. McKenna, how many schools chosen in, in New Hampshire to do the project? There are 13 schools. 13 schools, and there will be a, um, there's going to be a, a competition in terms of judging kids for creativity and what have you, and the, the, I guess the grand prize for New Hampshire will be a trip for the kids involved um, down to Washington, D.C. for a tour. So. Oh, it's okay. Thank you very much, and we'll look forward to hearing about it. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Yagley, we will... Home Alone can be scary for kids in the movies and for real. What would you do if you were Home Alone? If a stranger knocks at your door and you are scared, what would you do? If the phone rings, what, should you answer it or not? Our man will help you answer this question. If you are home alone and you get hurt, our kids have first aid items that will help you. If fire breaks out and you're home alone, call the emergency numbers on our stickers. If someone tries to break into your house, our kit will help you know, help you know what to do. Get your free home alone helpers kit from the Fleet Youth Leaders at Chamberlain Street School. Don't stay home without it. <laughs> And while we're doing it, Beth will do something. <laughs> home Alone Wrap. We're the Home Alone Helpers, and we're here to say we've got to give kids. We've got to give kids kits in a major way. There's a, if there's a stranger at your door, you're getting pretty scared. Get out their kits; they'll get you prepared. You smell some ugly smoke. There's a fire in the house. You should you should read our manual so you know to get out. You've come home from school, you see a broken door. You should read our, man our manuals. You've got to go next door. Now you've got our kits. Don't throw them in a pile. Kids might need them in a while. <laughs> Very good. in the 1800s. And then we're going up here to Crawford Notch. We're going to be inside the lobby of a very elegant Victorian. The best match with this mountain is off. These are representative of what we would send out. You know, we want how exit means out. Exports are things that you ship out. Imports must be things that you ship in. Very good. governor of New Hampshire. So he made a deal, and King George said that he could develop this town. They drew up this plan, and then they had a skit. This was so they wouldn't break their backs after they had plowed a furrow. They didn't have to bend over and put a seed every time. 
they could have a stick here, see how that would twist and make it tight, and then they'd have another stick to push the spring, and it would release the seeds for them. So you can see brain at work, right? Okay, behind, what's that? That, I honestly don't know. Yes, it was. Oh, people didn't see it. Right, that's true. But what I wanted you to see is that no matter when people live, they always like to do the same things. So when you're learning history, you're not just learning names and words on pages, you're learning about the real people. Okay? Okay. Um, if I could get a hair, but you know what? For hundreds of years before that, there were no live fish because the river was one of the tenderest in the country because all the factories had dumped their waste. I met a lady who grew up in Claremont, and she said when she was little, she could hardly wait when she went shopping to see what color the river would be. They would just dump the dye, and it was poisonous. So, how do you think it got cleaned up? We cleaned it. Actually, private citizens got together, and they worked hard to raise the money. Do you know how much money it took to clean this river up? A billion. And here's an example of some of the horrible sludge that had to be cleaned out. So, when things get bad, you just have to go a little bit and show you the
Moran, she's from Berlin, New Hampshire. The next one down is where Senator Wayne King from Romney, New Hampshire, sits. The next. Come to. making those decisions right now as we uh, try to finish up the end of the legislative session. Uh, I do look forward to uh, listening to your projects. I am chairman of our, our uh, recycling committee in the town of Stratum, and so uh, it is some, uh, something that I do know a little bit about and something that I certainly am interested in. <laughs>
for the, the year 2005, May 1993. Whereas during the month of May 1993, we, the future of New Hampshire, present to Governor O'Meara our vision for New Hampshire in the year 2005. Whereas a sweet new leaders should call your attention to card safety. Whereas in order to resolve this problem, the following should occur. Number one, the following will be standard equipment on all new cars by the year 2005. A, airbag for all passengers, <coughs> breathalyzer installations, steering wheels, uh, breathalyzer installations on steering wheels, shoulder harness for all passengers, pickless locks for opening and closing cars. Whereas the solution of uh, or accomplishment of car safety will greatly benefit New Hampshire citizens. Whereas there will be fewer accidents related to injuries, no more drunk drivers. and their advisors, Jennifer Wiggin and Jim McKenna. 
Are we missing anybody? Mrs. Riley? Does she have Mrs. Riley? Come on up, Mrs. Riley. Come on up, Mrs. Riley. Kelly Patterson, Brian Potter, Ro Roseanne Kraft, yeah, you hang out. Uh -huh. Michelle Wilson, Cheryl Burns, and Okay, the first award is given to a team that develops an entirely new idea or a new approach to solving a problem. The winner of the most unique program and recipient of a $250 grant created a brochure to assist the students in finding activities and agencies in Concord. And the winner is Kids Network of Concord. The next award is given to the team whose project most benefits their community. The winner of the greatest commitment to community and recipient of a $250 grant is a tie for the beautification efforts. Therefore, two grants of $250 will be awarded in this category. The first is awarded to the Whitefield Challengers. project for about four months. When I was up north visiting one of our offices, I even got one of your, is it a pin? Was that Conway? Well, this, I heard about this project. Yeah. Second grant for this award goes to the Green Up, Clean Up New Market team. Congratulations. into their project. The residents of Littleton can now rest easier thanks to this team who numbered, who numbered houses to assist in 9-11 emergencies. The winner is the Littleton Number Bunch. Congratulations. <laughs> their community through partnerships to help them build the park in Haverhill, New Hampshire. And the winner is Project Park. <laughs> Our judges made a change to the next award category, and instead of issuing a grant for $250 for the most complex program, the judges retitled the category to the greatest commitment to school community. And the winner team visited 16 elementary schools 
and the high school to present their AIDS awareness program. And the winner is Claremont Double A's. Claremont. evaluating the outstanding Fleet Youth Leader Team. So they created a special award category, the Judges Award, for the runner-up team. This award carries with it a $500 grant, and the winner is the school who made the town of Wilton a safer place for pedestrians. Will the winning team from Cross Rock, Cock, Crosswalks Helping Hands please come forward? Now it's time to announce the outstanding Fleet Youth Leader Team for 1992-93. They will receive a $1,000 grant for their school and an all-expense paid trip to Washington, D.C. This team assembled 2,100 kits. No, no. <laughs> For elementary school children in Rochester, New Hampshire. Congratulations. checks and she promises to get you real checks when next week okay you can try to cash because i'd be interested in you know. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> okay. We do have, Mr. Mrs. New Hampshire has volunteered to take a few autographs. Let's not all run to the front of the room all at once and we can sort of trade a line and have a, a not crowd. We'll have Mrs. New Hampshire take some autographs over here by this table. Okay? So feel free to come up with something for an autograph if you have something that you'd like to have on. Also. Congratulations. My that was final a great remarks visit. are that I hope we'll see many of you here next year for our 